Welcome back to the Torque Test channel. This is our third episode featuring hand tools. You guys keep watching them and suggesting more stuff to test, so we're gonna keep making them. Today we see how much better a six point wrench is, or socket, versus an open end wrench on soft and imperfect fasteners. But also, and maybe more controversially, how 12 point and spline designs compare to those two in performance. The results sort of speak for themselves on this one, so stay tuned. While we were working on the first half of this, Uncle Bumblefuck himself decided to test 12 point versus six point wrenches to failure too. And he showed that both are plenty strong versus the right fastener and likely to yield at similar amounts of punishment. But outside of tool failure, how much grippy grippy can you expect to get from one of these tools on let's say non-perfect hardware? Basically, how likely are these tools to slip on something soft, undersized or rusty, on brand new large bolt heads, maybe you don't need to be picky, but if you're starting a tool collection, what should you be leaning towards to work on everything? And with the big man himself even giving his blessing for us to extract some more data on the subject, let's dive in. Basically what you're looking at here are wrenches made from the same brand of different designs. After some research online, I couldn't find one brand that makes all three different types on a wrench, but we have a gear wrench in both 12 point and six point, one is longer pattern, but should be pretty irrelevant on the business end. And Craftsman, who makes 12 point and spline drive. Theoretically, within a brand is the best way to measure the performance of one design versus another. A snap-on six point beating a Pittsburgh 12 point, for instance, wouldn't mean much. So if we do see a difference, it's more likely to be a design advantage one. Then we also have sockets, this time all three designs on one brand, which I found in the Power Built brand sold at many auto parts stores. These are six point, 12 point, and spline, which is only sold in a set, not individually, so we bought the set and sort of just took it out. But stay tuned to the end where we add some more USA made wrenches that really help complete the picture we're making here. Every tool used today is the same size because the hardware we're tightening today is our beloved coupling nuts made from as soft steel as you're gonna find on any hardware. And these are great because the thread size internally, half inch coarse threaded on the grade eight bolts here, is quite large compared to the outside hex. So the threads won't be the weak point, just slipping on that outside hex, which is what we want. To make these already soft nuts even closer to the messed up stuff you might run into, we're going to do some good old fashioned precision rounding of them. Using a jig next to a tabletop grinder, we're gonna bring these down to 60% rounded. That is the difference between the flats and the corners is about 0.01 inches, maybe 97 thou. We're going to remove 40 of that thou or make 40% rounded in this case. And just for your info, all the wrenches and sockets tested today tested to the max of these coupling nuts when the nuts were not rounded. But 40%, that's not too crazy. Some wrench designs are made to work on 70 to 80% rounded stuff. So let's get into it. We're gonna keep this dyno in bolt tension pounds, PSI for finer resolution, but for your reference, that works out to 11 to one in the foot pound scale, and that stays pretty linear. Since some of you were curious, this rig even set up with this half inch coarse thread, like here is pretty sensitive. Just the plastic socket hang tag can register some torque on it. Up first is the Craftsman. We're gonna take a look at the open end first. Realistically, these should be the worst option, but provide the most access. And we just wanna know the difference between it a box end and a socket, since really that could be an episode in itself. So let's pack it into this one. So 467 before it slipped and sort of stuck, which we have no idea whether that's any good or not. Let's see the Craftsman 12 point box end to find out. Box end wrenches are what we and probably you use to break bolts free when a ratchet or breaker bar won't fit. Frankly, how this part performs on less than amazing shallow bolt heads is pretty important stuff given the abuse ours see. So already well past the open end, which makes sense. And that's 1309 PSI, which works out to 119 foot pounds on a rounded 3 16 bolt. Now for the spline, really getting to the heart of the issue now. Yes, the 12 point worked, but is spline better from the same brand, worse? By how much? One thing we noticed with all spline tools today is that at least on these soft coupling nuts, you can sort of feel them bite into the hex nut, which feels in person like a tiny slip, then a stop and it feels much firmer after that. And here's evidence of that very slight slip and bite. It gets a bit attached. 
but that process is effective beyond the 12 point here and up to 1578 before basically machining this thing down into a circle. That's 143 foot pounds. That's good stuff. I'll admit I've always skipped over the spline stuff as it seemed a bit gimmicky to me, but so far might be eating my words. Our next test is with the same style of wrenches, but 12 point versus 6 point from Gear Wrench. Here's the open end. The Craftsman made 467 in this test, and it's with the same new hardware and wrench size. The gear wrench felt a bit more confident in its bite here and climbed to 761, above the Craftsman and not all bad considering. The 12 point on the other hand brought some surprises. That's right, making it only up to 422 below its own open end side on the same very wrench. And I tested this again with my own gear wrench combination wrench backing those results up with the same sort of disappointment. Hopefully the six point gear wrench has better luck. And that 12 point shocked me a bit. I've certainly slipped my wrenches on bolt heads before with the gear wrench and just assumed that's 12 point being 12 point, but the gear wrench scored well under the Craftsman. And this six point is putting in work, easily passing the other two wrench end designs and piling on the PSI up to way up to 1,409 of those PSIs, which works out to 128 foot pounds before sort of camming off the nut despite our best efforts to keep it on straight. That's a pretty dramatic spread, making me rethink my gear wrench spanners. Not sure if it's enough to push me towards six point on a wrench as that's a whole lot of extra degrees of swinging to fit it onto an awkwardly clocked bolt head. But with one tool that that shouldn't be a problem on is a socket. A socket on a wrench, you just turn it with your fingers a few clicks and the six point will be working a treat again. Which makes you wonder sometimes, why do people have 12 point chrome sockets? Well, there are 12 point bolt heads like on connecting rods and head bolts and on larger stuff like axle nuts that need them. We've never really seen a performance difference, stuff that big just less likely to round in the first place when we're talking that size of fastener. But how likely are we talking, especially on smaller stuff? Let's find out. We're marking here on the nut where the wrench depth ends so that it's an apples to apples comparison. At full depth, these all outperform the wrenches, which we've just confirmed that, but you likely won't have that amount of depth to bite on a bolt head, especially an ugly looking one. Here's the power built 12 point socket. This one felt confidence in its bite from the 12 point, but it met its end quite suddenly and called it a day at 573. Not altogether impressive versus the wrenches. And here's the spline. The spline was the same deal, sort of good until it wasn't 530, about the same as the 12 point, not super conclusive between the two there. Now for the six point. The six point felt gummier and would stick onto the coupling nut, but it brought the beans, climbing past and frankly embarrassing the 12 point and spline sockets. Doing well to keep its depth similar to a wrench, the six point brought the largest contrast between the same brand designs that we've seen yet, with 1580 maxing out this hex nut. The nut was actually collapsing on itself and squishing the two ends closer to each other at the end there at 150 foot pounds something the Craftsman Spline Wrench was starting to do as well. So before we throw an audible and add some last few wrenches for a good reason, let's see what the data we've collected looks like. We have our three brands here, designs here, open end, 12 point, spline, and six point. Then which one did best from each set and how far off the other designs were from it. Basically between these three options, spline did best and by this much. Between these, the six point did best by this much. And between the 12, 6, and spline, 6 point did best by this much here. But we weren't happy enough with this amount of data to total the findings yet, so we made a community post asking you guys if you know of a brand that makes all three designs on one wrench, and one of you pointed out Proto, so appreciate that. And with some more hardware and wrenches ordered, this should really round out our data. Finally, including a well-known USA-made brand, we get all three designs like we did from the sockets, plus an open end. Though you're certainly paying extra for those bespoke six and spline end wrenches. So let's see if this follows the trends we've been seeing so far or if we're just shooting in the dark here. 
The open end didn't feel amazing, but it did make up to 734 PSI or 67 foot-pounds. The best so far on that end can't complain. The 12 point should be higher than that, but if so, by how much? Let's see. It slips a bit early at 920 or so, wasn't able to improve on that, and now is just even more rounded. Theoretically, to match what we've seen, spline should be better than that, in contrast to my assumptions, so let's see it yet again. The spline proto does outshine the 12 point and makes it past. Makes it look quite easy too, though maybe a bit stuck on there in the process. If that doesn't stop it from making past 1400 where it does and some of its classic machining of the hex into a circle here as well. Six point box end up next and it has a mountain to climb here. The six point feels very no nonsense, sort of like just using it on a brand new bolt to begin with. Even with the wrench extension on there, like it can make it to 200 foot pounds without a care in the world. It did make it up near 1600 PSI or that 145 to 150 foot pounds again before the nut started to compress on itself. But there really was no end in sight for this one. So again, score one for the six point category. I'm sure many of you assumed it might go down like this. Some people aren't sure, others just know from experience that 12 point, particularly on smaller bolts and the worse it looks, turns stuff with flats sort of into stuff with rounds real quick. But how much better it was in a controlled setting, and more specifically versus spline, I had no idea, so let's take a look in summary as well. Averaged across each tool with a design that works out to 60 foot-pounds for open-end wrenches, better than I expected, 70 foot-pounds for 12-point, a lot closer than I expected there, remember this is on just rounded stuff, then that jumps to 107 foot-pounds for spline, and that's quite a jump and 139 foot-pounds with a W in every test that featured it is the six point, the reigning champ. And by exactly how much, assuming we're not incompetent and six point is best, then in the same testing methods, spline is 23% off of that, 12 point is 47% off of six point, and using the open end in a pinch where it's required, it's just about under half as good as six point. Now spline still doesn't give me the warm and fuzzies, call me old school, but it's hard to argue with the data. Tools slip when they slip. They don't really care about how new and different they are or how much you question them. I'll just say on average across multiple brands and countries of origin on spline, I'm probably just wrong. And that's the takeaway you should have. On imperfect, maybe rusty, maybe let's say a lube tech sought before you sort of bolt heads. On new hardware, maybe grade five, grade eight hardware, non-rusty climates maybe it won't make as much difference to you, especially as you go up in bolt size. But if you're about to drop $200 plus on a ratcheting box and wrench set and plan to only buy that once, because let's face it, we've all broken bolts loose with those, you might just want a design that's going to work for you on most things that you see rather than to have to buy another set and switch out tools during a job because some bolt is looking at you funny. Appreciate you joining us for this one. Recommend more hand tools and test types below in the comments. Click subscribe to catch those. And thanks as always for watching.